Five myths today about ballistics. You're joining us on a bison hunt in progress that we'll show a little bit of to highlight a couple myths. But the first one will be fascinating because it involves a fast bullet and a chunk of ballistics gel. Myth number one, it zips right through. So the thought is, if you get a bullet and you shoot it on game, if that bullet's just going too fast, it doesn't actually give enough time for the bullet to expand in the animal, and so it just shoots a little perfect knitting, ne knit knitting needle hole through it. I think it's a myth, and we're about to run an experiment to see if it's true. We're gonna shoot the, ver the world's fastest bullet into ballistics gel. And so if it's true, then yeah, this bullet, if anything, should make a perfect hole through would be this but we'll see if it expands. Garrett, ready to shoot this for us? Ready to shoot it. Garrett loaded this up for us. I'll kind of show you what this is as he's getting ready. We're gonna shoot this on paper first at 100, just cause I'm curious what kind of groups this thing shoots. This rifle is our Socko 90 that you guys know. And oh yeah, we got a sweet backstop recoil pad on there. Then this ammo, that's a 300 Win Mag case, just like a normal 300 Win Mag. But what's the situation up here? This is a, a plastic Sabo so that it makes it the width, the diameter of a 30 caliber. And, but it's just a tiny little 22 caliber bullet. So this is a 50 grain bullet in a 300 Win Mag. It goes one mile per second, almost 5,000 feet per second. This thing is traveling because it's you know 300 Win Mag with a tiny, tiny little bullet. But I am very curious to see if we get any accuracy out of this and what it does in ballistics gel. The Garmin claims to only read up to 4,000 feet per second, so it shouldn't be able to do this accurately. This, according to the load data, is going quite a bit faster. Oh, <laughs> 4,569.2. But again, it's only rated to 4,000, so I don't know if that's accurate or not. My guess is that it is. Got it. Fourth from the top. Tell me what the recoil is like on this thing. Seven inches high, perfect on windage. What does the recoil feel like? It's a lot. It is? Yeah. It kind of just feels the same as a normal 300 wind mag. It doesn't feel a whole lot different. Oh, wow. Right next to it. Really? I thought the accuracy was going to be ridiculous. Dude, we could hunt a coyote with this. That would be so cool. All right, that's a one inch group. Wow. With the craziest 300 wind mag neck down to 22. Okay, so now we're going to test this on ballistics gel and we're going to see if a bullet going one mile per second expands or knitting needles. All right, got our ballistics gel set up. Remember to correct because it's shooting crazy high. Yeah. What's your guess? I'm guessing seven inches of penetration and it expands rapidly. You don't think it'll go through the whole thing? No way. That's way too much speed. It's going to expand rapidly. I don't the know zips if... right through thing, no chance. I don't know if it'll go all the way through, but I think it'll go pretty far. It doesn't make sense. Okay. This is what I think about the it zips right through theory. If I drive my Lamborghini, I, I don't have a Lamborghini. If I drive my Lamborghini into a telephone pole at 20 miles an hour, bends the bumper, right? Metal's gonna bend when it hits something. The theory is, if I drive 200 miles an hour into a telephone pole, it would just saw a perfect clean hole through the car. Obviously not, it's gonna pancake the whole thing, right? The more speed just helps the expansion. And so I think it zips right through is totally meh. I guess we'll see. We are one shot away. Nailed it, right on it, let's go see. Okay, wow. So, look at this. You can see, it enters here. You can see little shards of glass, of metal, all over the place. A couple inches into there, and then it penetrated. Would you say that was about seven inches? Because that was exactly my guess. A little stub of it. So. Is there any chance that this thing just zipped through going too fast? Not at all. It expanded very, very violently for a little 22 caliber bullet.
So this myth is basically busted, but Seth from Hornady gave a little nuance to this, that there are actually some types of bullets that may not expand well if they are going too fast. But again, that's a tiny subset and not your typical hunt hunting bullet. The next one is something that I've personally been interested in. I mean, I love bolt guns. Most of this channel is bolt guns, right? But I always look at the guys, especially in the Midwest and stuff, in states you are allowed to hunt with an AR. And I think, why can't we get an auto-loading rifle that's just as accurate as the bolt guns? It's got to be possible. And so um, this is a complete rifle from X2 Development Group. It is awesome. But it's the barrels that I've really been impressed with because I have a whole bunch of ARs and, you know, it's typical, you know, one and a half to three inch groups at 100. But X2 Development Group has come out with a new barrel that is impressively accurate. And so I have this as the, the complete rifle, but I also have just the barrel. Uh, really impressed with that. So let me show you what this can do. The ammo we're throwing in here is this load from its SIG Marksman ammo that we found to shoot past. I will say this, hashtag not sponsored, the SIG ammo is crazy. Yep. We've tried it in so many different rifles now, and like when we test five loads from all different companies, it feels like it's SIG is nine times time. out of 10. The yeah. SIG just is compatible with so many different yeah. rifles. Not exactly the most stable position here, but he's been shooting really well with it. Oh, those are almost touching. Really? That's yeah. crazy from an AR at 100 yards. It feels like a bolt gun. It's so accurate. I love that barrel. Yeah, those three, that's sub them away. <laughs> that's cool. That's crazy. <laughs> and so like, man, it has opening up possibilities for me because that's really the thing that keeps me from hunting with an AR more. Like this is a lightweight rifle. Some ARs are a little bit heavier to, you know, be chug walking around the mountains with. But if it's lightweight, it's an auto loader, which is an advantage. You might get a second shot real quick, especially on something like a hog. And I mean, it's sub MOA. That's really cool from a reasonably priced barrel. And there's zero recoil. Like just watch me. There's no flinch at all. Yeah, that was just same hole right there. That's, that's crazy. That's a half MOA group with an AR. That on that, a reasonably priced barrel. Yeah. The you have just shot a three-quarter minute group and two half-inch groups with an AR at a hundred. Like I, I'm not. It's not like this is unheard of and never been done before. It's just so cool. It's a reasonably priced barrel. You know, you take whatever AR you have, screw on a new barrel, and that's a legit hunting rifle right there. Three quarter MOA, three quarter MOA, third MOA, third MOA, that's two shots in one hole, and three quarter MOA. That is incredibly impressive with a bolt gun. X2 Dev Group, that is a cool barrel. Next myth, keep that thing tight on your shoulder. <laughs> so when we've we've done a lot of work on recoil, obviously at Backfire with the backstop recoil pad and you know testing it with all different sensors, we can essentially create a heat map of where the pressure is on a shoulder and different ways to kind of hold it. And so anytime you see somebody shooting a gun for the first time or shooting a heavier hitting cartridge, something like that, it's impossible, impossible for gun guys to stand by without somebody saying, now keep that tight on your shoulder, son. Um, and so there's some, some merit to that, right? If you have the gun not at your shoulder at all, like it's really, really loose, then that gun gets momentum and there's gonna be a peak there. But I feel like the bigger mistake is actually keeping it 
tight on your shoulder instead of just nice, you know, just placed up against your shoulder. Because what happens if, if somebody's hitting a, shooting a heavy hitting recoil, recoiling cartridge, you flinch up this shoulder and now when this thing goes, there's nowhere to go, right? And so it's gonna clobber you. I wanna show you this clip that I was shooting an elephant gun uh, the other day that I got this, by the way, it's freaking cool. It's a 416 Ruger, it's a Ruger guide gun. And I'm just, I'm gonna take my sons on a Cape Buffalo hunt uh, before they leave the house. I feel like that's necessary. <laughs> Let's go. You know, we're out shooting and what I told them is, you know, yes, keep it on your shoulder, you know, keep it up here, but make sure you're not going like this. You want that shoulder to rock back. If you, because then it's gently taking the recoil, a ton of the force gets soaked up when you allow your shoulder to just kind of be pretty loose and limber and then it rocks back it makes it way easier to hit those to shoot those heavier recoiling cartridges next time you shoot try it don't tense up allow itself some movement this one's a big one for me the high shoulder shot ruins too much meat There is one circumstance that I would totally agree with you, but uh, maybe a year and a half ago, we totally switched. Almost all our hunting shots are high shoulder now. Uh, you know, most of the time, you know, growing up as a kid, it was always get the crease right behind the, that front shoulder and it, it works fine. It, you know, there are a lot of vital, vital shots you can make, but when you hit just right at that knuckle at the top of the shoulder blade, it is just like, dun, 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 dun. I mean, it's just lights out, just shut down immediately. And ever, ever since we switched to that, I mean, it's just a swift, clean kill every single time. I like it for a lot of reasons. If you miss low, you're into vitals. You go left or right with the wind and you're kind of following the spine there. And if you miss high, you're probably gonna miss the whole animal and it's gonna be a clean miss. So I like it because it, it, if you do, if you are off, the misses aren't bad. It's an acceptable result or you get into the neck. And so anyway, we really like the high shoulder shot. We've done it tons of times now, but what we hear all the time is that they, people don't do it because it ruins too much meat. And every time I think, no, that would be, if you shoot in the middle of the shoulder, yeah, you're going right through your quarter. We're going to the top. And if you look on this bison, like here's our quarter, right? And I'm aiming there, and that's exactly where your knife is gonna go anywhere, anyway, at the top of the quarter, it's the high shoulder. And so it really, we haven't had any issue at all with ruining meat. In fact, we've less lost much less meat because if you aim right behind the crease and you miss by three inches, right behind your quarter, right into your quarter, right? And so I feel like that's much more likely. But a member of Backfire Plus messaged uh, the other day with something that was really interesting. He went for a high shoulder shot, but he was up in a tree stand shooting down at that down angle. And so it entered in at the right spot, but it exited on the offside quarter. So that might be a situation where you wanna be careful with it. Everybody has their preference for what works, but you shot dozens and dozens of animals and that's what we're moving to every time, no meat loss. The next myth is that you wanna shoot the lighter bullet because it'll go a lot faster and then you'll have much better trajectory and wind drift. This is one where you have a lot of different variables, but when you're looking at two different loads, let's say we're shooting uh, something to shoot uh, seven PRC, uh, because it can shoot a 175 ELDX, or you could come way down and shoot the lighter ELDXs. And so which one is going to give you the better trajectory and the and least wind drift? Well, the heavier the bullet in general, the better the BC, right? And so in general, that's gonna do better against wind, but your bullet is going slower when you do that. And so which one wins out? If you're just looking at the, the ballistics, the drop and the drift, which is better? Lighter bullet going faster or heavier bullet going slower? Here are several examples from different cartridges and you can kind of see which one in general wins out. It's pretty clear but it depends on you know what your barrel length is because sometimes if we get going too slow we have problems 
or if we, uh, you know, you're just not maintaining the velocity that you want to shoot at, at range at an animal, something like that, or a target. So heavier bullet going faster, heavier bullet going slow, faster bullet going fast. You get the idea. So these myths are kind of a series that we're doing on myths that gun guys still believe. We've done two videos previously and they're right here and there or somewhere. So click them before you leave and I better go wash my hands.